Hello everyone, my name is Sherman Briganza and today I'll be describing new techniques and concepts for customizing your generated code for perfect C code. Typically, a lot of the people I speak to want to customize their C code to make sure that it fits perfectly within a larger application framework prior to being deployed in a real world application. It should also adhere to standards for safety and readability. I'll describe two main workflows for accomplishing this task. First, the old workflow, still fully supported based on data objects. And secondly, new workflows based on code mapping and code dictionary technology. Today, a person configures code by opening up the model and then deciding on a data management strategy where they decide where to store data objects and specify storage classes. Then they go to CSC designer uh, begin creating these new storage classes and maybe even write some TLC code to customize their code. Last, they create custom versions of simulating parameters and signals and import their data to make sure that those data objects are populated correctly. Next, they go to Model Explorer and set, set up those data objects to use the right storage class. And finally, they set up their imports and outports by clicking on the signal line and editing the result signal object. Only after going through these steps are they ready to actually generate code. Now I'll talk a little bit about the new workflow for customizing data without data objects. You can start off by launching the embedded coder app from the app gallery. From there, you can go to the code interface dropdown and select the coder dictionary button. This brings up a unified UI that can be used to author new storage classes. Here you can see a storage class that's already set up for configuring root IO. What I'm going to do now is create a new storage class that's intended to customize code for measurements. So this will be applied to signals. Once I'm done this, I can go back to my model um, and from the code interface dropdown again, I can select default code mappings. And this brings up a spreadsheet and property inspector where I can configure everything for code. Here for my imports and outports, I'll select the root UI storage class, uh, sorry, the root IO storage class. And then in the signal and states tab, I can select the new measurement storage class that I created that can be used to make sure that certain states and signals are preserved in the generated code. I can also set up the signal for measuring. So in this particular one, I have also set up to be measurement and I give it a particular name so that that name is reflected in the generated code. Once I'm done specifying a code identifier, I am ready to start generating code. Notice I did all of this without data objects, without having to write any TLC code or complex MATLAB code. This is right in the canvas. So now that I'm done generating code, I can inspect it to see that the specifications I just uh, added are truly reflected in the generated code. For example, I can see the root IO storage class being applied as well as measurement right here. Um, in the model.c file. One thing I'd like to point out is that these specifications are actually preserved even if I switch to other system target files. So now I can switch over to, um, for example, the Simulink Coder app. And Simulink Coder gets its own instance of code mapping settings. So if I open up the spreadsheet in this UI, I'll see that everything's set to default. But this is a separate instance of code mapping, so I can actually just switch right back to embedded coder. And what I'll see here is my original specifications preserved. So what that means is that I can switch from target to target, and have all my settings preserved, which is, again, another step forward for the UR flow. 
Here I've demonstrated a data object list based workflow. Um, I hope you find it interesting. Thank you.